and hello. Howdy McCoskey here to give you a short video today on the site of Teotihuacan, Mexico. A site which has a tremendous amount of wisdom and knowledge, but it's hidden from plain sight. And I decided to share what is chapter 16 of my book, The Power of Then, with you, based on the challenges that came from the loss of the Stolen History website a few days ago, where a tremendous amount of research, a tremendous amount of knowledge and information was wiped out and eliminated in the course of one day. And it began to get me thinking of how we can be thinking of preserving the knowledge and understanding we're getting into the future, because obviously these types of electronic platforms are not a good long-term source for the storage of information. This stuff can be lost very, very easily. And of course, once you don't have electricity anymore, all of the devices to attempt to get it become useless. So I wanted to share understandings that came to me on my first trip to Teotihuacan way back in 1999 as I began to see where the wisdom of the site is stored, where the wisdom of the site is located. And we're going to end the day with this photograph here. I just want to let you see where we're going to wind up ending our talk. I'm going to give small bits and pieces of my chapter, chapter 16 on Teotihuacan. You can please go to the, it's free on the website. The link will be below. Go and read the chapter in depth yourself. There's lots of information, but I only want to share a couple of things that relate us to the storage of wisdom and the loss of wisdom, because this is also a site of the, that talks of the loss of great wisdom at the same time. Teotihuacan is a very unique site because it was deserted and covered with vegetation when the Aztecs discovered it upon taking over Mexico. And as I write here, the Aztecs were a conquering race from the north who misunderstood the powerful wisdom of the conquered Maya and Toltec. The, Az the Aztecs did not know who built Teotihuacan, but they did know of a myth that claimed the fifth sun, our modern world, was born here. Two large mounds were supposed to be dedicated to the sun and the moon, and a long open stretch of road was called the Way of the Dead because the Aztec felt the mounds alongside were tombs. The Aztec gave the site its modern name, Teotihuacan, meaning the place where people wake from the dream of life to become gods. And what is amazing to me is, as soon as I was there, was the incredible parallels between Teotihuacan and Giza in Egypt. They're both extremely old. They're both, they both have three pyramids that are aligned to, similarly aligned to the stars of Orion's belt. They are constructed almost similarly. The Pyramid of the Sun, this one right here, is the exact same base as the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's just a, it's just a smaller height. The Great Pyramid of Giza is about here, and, and but the base is still exactly the same. And these these sites, these these are actually in some way mirrors of each other. Teotihuacan and Giza linked together. No one is just like Giza. No one's really sure who built Teotihuacan. All we have is the stories of the Spaniards who got the stories from the Aztecs, and the Aztecs tried to figure out the stories after they took sites over. And it's a very good example of how this wisdom, this this, this was a, a center of wisdom in North America probably the center of wisdom in North America in the in the extreme ancient past. Yet the, the knowledge was never written down. There are no hieroglyphs on the site. There seem to be no books. There are a few murals, painted murals, but not many. The, there's little, little small pieces of information, and I think what's there, the Aztecs um, read incorrectly interpreted incorrectly, didn't understand the alchemic symbolism of what they were seeing, and created an entire way of life that they thought were mirroring the Toltec that they obviously admired, but in actuality they were 
mirroring incorrect information, which is a great example of the study of history right up to our modern world, that we are perpetuating an incorrect myth as we go on. And I want to share a few of those confusions that the Aztec had and then show where the wisdom of this site actually actually still is and is still accessible. Again, with the hope that we can start thinking of how we want to store our own wisdom because this was named the Way of the Dead, this avenue. But again, this avenue was only named that because the Aztecs thought these sites here were tombs. And that's very similar to the modern Egyptologist who still believes that in, in spite of massive evidence showing it's not true, they still believe that Egyptian pyramids are tombs. And it's a, it's a perfect example of showing how these mistakes easily begin and easily then just perpetuate themselves into, into further history. The site itself of Teotihuacan was about as large as ancient, Egypt, or as, uh, uh, ancient Rome. It had perhaps 250,000 inhabitants. It was eight square miles, and very little of it has actually been uncovered. This is another really strange thing about Teotihuacan and leads into these mud flood hypotheses is that what we do know of Teotihuacan is that it was destroyed in some fashion. And it seems like fire was a very important part of the destruction. It, it, it did suffer extreme fire damage. And then it was, for all intents and purposes, buried. The city was... This, the, the entire, almost the entire thing had to be dug out. Uh, and if they've only, to this point, only dug out a very small portion of the site of Teotihuacan. Most of it is still covered in vegetation. They've only, they've only dug out the main areas, the main, uh, what would be the most key tourist sites. And no one is really sure what the destruction was, what the fire was that caused the destruction. Um how the city got buried. There are even some suggestions that the inhabitants of Teotihuacan destroyed the city themselves and buried it themselves, that they they were the ones who actually purposely destroyed the city. I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying that is one of the many hypotheses as to how this city got buried. Um, so you're more than welcome to, to go through. Again, I'm just going to go through what I think links to our discussion today, and you can go and read the rest. So this is discussion next on Toltecs. You can see another photo of the Way of the Dead um, and the Pyramid of the Sun here. We're looking from the top of the Pyramid of the Moon, and it's going to be the top of these temples that we're going to look at in very close detail at the end, these square rectangular series of rocks that are going to become, and including this small central area here. And I don't have a great picture of it in this um in this chapter, but if you see Teotihuacan from above, the way the the way the um, the way the uh, avenue stretches out and where everything is positioned, it looks very much like a modern uh, computer circuit board. So there are speculation that this is like a gigantic computer placed on the ground. Uh, the Pyramid of the Sun is one of the very interesting parts of the site, and I really. When I first got a look at it from this exact angle and this exact photograph, I noticed the when you see it from this particular vantage point, it looks like an outstretched person. Uh, the stairway is an outstretched person that you climb up, and it began to take me deeper and deeper into what we're seeing, that this, this entire site is about the transformation of the human, and in fact, the transformation of human consciousness. Again, this is the place where people wake from the dream to become gods. Um, this is a place similar to Giza where complete knowledge would be available. And I don't want to go into all the, all the mathematics and the details of, of the Pyramid of the Sun and some of the strangeness of its excavations. Um, they do have caves underneath all of the pyramids with, uh, again, very unique astronomical alignments that not only the pyramids, but the caves also match up to. Uh, this is an interesting image. This is Quetzalcoatl. And on um, what's what's known as the third pyramid here is known as the Citadel. You have this head of Quetzalcoatl, and then you have uh, another head of, um, of uh, the rain god, I believe. Um, yeah, Tez, 
Tezcatlipoca, the smoking the smoking mirror god. And and again, I see that as it's sometimes called the god of rain and fire, but I see that as as, as duality, very much the the uh, the figure of duality. But these figures, they're and they're all very similar: the feathered serpent Quetzalcoatl, the bringer of knowledge, and it has its mouth uh, open in in almost the exact perfect depth and size for you to put your uh, hand and in, uh, inside. And I did when when the guards weren't looking, I slipped my fist into the into the serpent's mouth and when I did that uh, it's like my arm was hit by a jolt of electricity like my, my body was it was like touching an electric fence my body was just jolted by electricity and again I think this is a big part of these sites is is the tremendous energy that they're generating and I'm gonna talk about that when I talk to mica talk about the mica um, you can see some mica here which is which is just in this stela uh, a few pieces of it left, but mica, which is a very uh, sheet-forming kind of rock, in a number of the temples at Teotihuacan, underneath the floor, they found, for example, 90 square foot sheets of mica. And the mica is not from Mexico, even though Mexico does have mica. The, 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 the mica that's being used in Teotihuacan all comes from Brazil. So they managed to transport not just mica, but 90-foot square sheets of it in perfect condition from Brazil into the center of Mexico because they needed to have this particular mica, and then they placed it under the floor of the temple, which means it was not in any way some sort of ceremonial use. It's not like the way it's being used in this stila. You would be unable to see it beneath the floor. So why do you want mica underneath the floor of a temple? <clears throat> then I'll read this paragraph. Mica has some interesting characteristics. From a spiritual sense, mica is seen to offer a window to the psychic realm of divination. Thus, the room could have been used for some sort of fortune telling, with the powerful sheet of mica used to increase the psychic abilities of the priests. On a more scientific front, mica has a high electrical resistance and opaqueness to fast neutrons. Hence, it acts as an insulator or nuclear reaction mod moderator. And again, I'm asking, could the ancient Toltecs at the site have been using the mica as some sort of power generation at Teotihuacan? You're also going to notice as you begin to dig into Teotihuacan that the astronomy and the mathematics is incredible. Within the, within the layout of Teotihuacan is a complete, almost perfect representation of the modern solar system. A gentleman named Hugh Hairliston Jr., studied the site for decades, came across what he found as the standard Teotihuacan unit, and from using the standard Teotihuacan unit, was able to find the layouts and show pi, phi, epsilon, and to show that, in fact, various key parts of Teotihuacan were laid out in binary form to have the solar system perfectly displayed. So the sun would be exactly, the sun is the center point, and it has the Pyramid of Quetzalcoatl, and then as you move out in binary form, you would see perfectly Mercury where it should be, Venus where it should be, Earth where it should be, Mars where it should be. It's a, it's a magnificent thing that he managed to put together. There's also an interesting piece that the Way of the Dead is potentially thought of, you can see here, is thought of as a, as a potential river, that it was something that was filled with water. And that's because there are... It's not a complete, uh, a complete open area. Deep here in the back, you can see that they're actually blocking mechanisms, and they're very difficult. They're quite high, and you actually have to walk upstairs and downstairs to get from one side, one part of the, of this of this roadway, this avenue, to another roadway. And some have suggested that they're locks, that uh, this whole thing was filled with water, and that the water would, of course, resonate it as a, as a secondary tool of energy, uh, energy. Uh, construction along with the perfect geometry, the type of stone, um, the various types of things like the mica and everything else that was creating the incredibly high energetic form. Hugh Harrelson also saw this potentially as a giant guitar. You can see the similar layout of the of the square end and then the long uh, base of the guitar. He felt that you could also see the site in musical terms and that certain key elements of the site were in exact 
what you might call places of the of the octaves in uh, in the musical scale which links of course closely to the alchemic understanding of the music of the spheres and how the planets can be represented through um, musical notes so I'm just leaving that for you to look at I have a complete description of the myth of the fifth the creation of the fifth sun of our world and um, the and I'll leave that for you and how it how they jumped into the flames of the sun to create the new sun I don't want to get uh, that's not really what we're here to discuss but that's there I then have a, a section on the on human sacrifice which was definitely not a part of the ancient world that's an Aztec adoption that's an Aztec idea what I believe of misinformation of getting information that was not understood of seeing symbols that they didn't understand like a bleeding heart and 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 the bleeding heart being linked to um, being linked to ideas of transformation or enlightenment or the idea with the the skull with a with a dagger in it and the idea of the Aztecs taking this is this means some sort of killing some sort of sacrifice and of course these are alchemic uh, symbols of the death of the egoic self or the death of the person the death of the personality the death of the death of the thing that believes the dream to be real and the the Aztecs are the ones who made this mistake and uh, I have an entire chapter here which again links to knowledge preserving knowledge and preserving knowledge going forward so that the next group can understand what's being left for them even if the language that they speak is no longer the language that the knowledge was being being passed on with so I'm going to go through so you can read all of this again again things uh, things like the ripping of the heart out the wearing of, of, of the skin what all this means in a alchemic sense a alchemic and hermetic sense I then go through the same in, in various her hermetic knowledge I go through uh, looking into some of the murals that are still left of the site. They have some very beautiful artwork, very colorful. And I go through into some of what the what the murals represent. I go through the god known as the Smoking Mirror God, and again the the symbolism here. I go into the subject of burning water, which is again another one of the aspects I think that the Aztecs um, were badly mistaken about. Uh, so this, there was a tremendous knowledge at Teotihuacan that was not properly passed on in its open form. So this was the form that had images that may have had uh, reliefs, and these images were taken incorrectly by the Aztec. There's one place, though, where I'm sure the wisdom has not been misunderstood, and that is here. This is where I want to close this discussion. And... When I was at Teotihuacan, I had been drawn up the stairs of these small temples and was sitting for quite a long time with these with these square areas of rock. And you can see that the rocks have been placed not in random order. There are there are lines and and geometric shapes and but mostly they, they do fit in a sort of grid pattern on top of the the temples. And as I stared at the rocks and sat with the rocks for a long period of time, I, I was had been wondering for quite a while. I'd been looking for reliefs that might have shared wisdom. I'd been looking for a place where there might be hieroglyphs on the walls. I'd been looking for a place for books might have been held. Places, the, the standard way we would think of, of knowledge to be passed on. And after sitting here for about 30 or 40 minutes, it became quite apparent that the wisdom was in the rocks. That you could almost think of each of these rocks as a book or perhaps a chapter in a book and each one of these temples and you have to remember there's hundreds of them on the site may have had the wisdom of one particular unit of study one particular area one particular part of knowledge and your job would be to unlock each of these stones which I believe would have happened in when your consciousness could shift in a high enough fashion to match the consciousness in which the knowledge was laid into the stones, there would be almost a similar to how I described a bit of the experience in the canyon where I called it a information download. I think it would be something like that as well, that when your consciousness or your your vibrational rate is at is matching 
the rate that these stones are at, there there would be an automatic um, connection. And I, I, can, I can say that because it happened on a small basis. I can't say I had like a, like a complete opening of this entire thing, but you might say I had enough to get two or three or four stones to produce some transfer of, of knowledge, some transfer of information, and, and that was why I, I was pretty sure this is where the knowledge is. And if, it's an amazing thing to consider that not only has the knowledge continued and, and stayed in its original place, it stayed in its original place nearly hidden for the last thousand years. No one has no one has understood this, or the very few who have understood it have kept it very quiet. I chose to write about it in the book, and now I'm choosing to open openly say what I understood here because I think it's important for right now where we are, not because I want everyone to try to get to Teotihuacan and try to access the knowledge. I mean, if you can and, and you're... I think this kind of knowledge that's at Teotihuacan, you better be in the, you better be in a very clear, cleansed state of being, because I think if you're not, similar to the warnings I've had of going, just wandering around underground Giza, where you're not ready to be walking, if you try to access this knowledge and you're not ready to access it, it's not going to go well for you. I think there's a almost like a fail safe, like a like a, a a switch that will just turn off if again if the vibrational rate can't can't match the rate of the of the wisdom. So I think it's like a fail safe on it that until you can until you I wasn't able to get my my rate or my consciousness high enough to access it completely, only a tiny bit of it. I think that's a fail safe that you can try and try and try all you want, but you're not going to access it unless you can get to that level. And to be at the at that level of consciousness, you're not going to be bringing a lot of garbage with you. So that's why I don't mind sharing it, because I don't think very few people are going to be able, even if they want to, to access the knowledge that's here. But perhaps you listening to this are able to have your consciousness that high and would be able to access this knowledge. I, I sometimes access things just by looking at the picture. There's sometimes pieces of information that just, just come into my head when I stare at it. Um, so I just wanted to keep that with you as a way of now not only seeing how the ancient world did things. I see, I have lots of examples of this, of, of ancient Egypt as well. To take this with us and start thinking, how are we going to pass on the knowledge and wisdom we're gaining because we are gaining a tremendous understanding now, particularly of the history of this place in, in the last few hundred years. We're, we're starting to really uncover a lot of depth as to what likely happened in our past. And not only do we want to try to preserve that for people 50 or 100 or 200 years from now, and who knows what kind of world they're going to be living in, who knows what kind of information from our time or before are going to make it through uh, through normal channels, how much of it can we find our own way of getting it through so that it's possibly that can be found, just like the Toltec knowledge, it's here. It's sitting here at Teotihuacan or it's sitting here at various other sites. It comes up to the person to know how to put their consciousness in the right place to access it. So I'll leave you with that, and uh, please, by all means, go and read the rest of the chapter. And... Um, as I say here, if if done with respect, honesty, and love, some powerful wisdom might be the result of your effort. Perhaps you will actually be able to gain the complete understanding of Teotihuacan and its initiation into the high hermetic wisdom. Thanks for joining me today. I'll be back with you with another video in a few days soon. Thank you to those who are subscribing, those who are following the channel, liking, making donations, and by all means, please make a comment, a suggestion. I always find what people want to share very, very interesting. Thanks again.